<laughs> when, they're, when they're drying up and looking like they're really thirsty, that's when you don't want to water them. This video is a little unstructured. I'll just be updating on a random variety of things out here. This is pretty new. A bird has built a nest right on the gutter on the back side of our house. Wendy and I were out here just the other day filming the bit that you'll see in just a little bit about our potato buckets. And this bird nest wasn't there at that point. So this is really pretty new. No eggs yet, as far as I can tell. And it doesn't even look like the bird is quite finished with the nest yet. When Wendy mentioned that she saw this nest, I thought she meant that the bird nest was in the gutter. If that was the case, I certainly would have removed the nest so it wouldn't be blocking the gutter. But for the most part, we let the bird nests be wherever they are, let the birds do what they need to. The baby rabbits are super cute, of course. It's really fun. They're, they've been eating solid food and drinking from their waterers lately. white one your favorite? Yes. There's not a whole lot to say about our first batch of meat chickens. They're Cornish Cross, same kind of chicken that you get in the grocery store. They're not real camera friendly. Mostly they just sit and lay down on the ground. So they're, uh, they're not that fun for, for videos but hopefully they will taste good. This is the most exciting part of the meat chickens day. They get to come out and get their food first thing in the morning. Look at them go. Don't all come at once. Pace yourselves. Come on, you can do it. These chickens are just pretty fat and lazy, and they're not particularly attractive in my opinion. They poop a lot. 
and they just lay around and eat. So, there's not a lot to say about these meat chickens. They're only about a week, maybe two weeks away from us harvesting them. Hopefully they'll taste good enough that we'll want to do this again. We're getting a steady supply of eggs from our quail, so no complaints there. The ramp system that I designed for this hutch so that the eggs would roll down into this collection box, it's working pretty well. For the most part, for the most part, the eggs do roll down, but a lot of times they'll get stuck. There's one right, there's one right there now. They'll get stuck right there on that block that we use to keep the water level. I just have to check there every day to make sure that I get all the eggs. The hardware cloth coil that I have down in the bottom of this box was probably unnecessary. The eggs are pretty tough. They're pretty tough little eggs and I don't think they would crack just dropping down into the box without that little spring cushion. The sonic mole and gopher deterrents that we put out here near Wendy's in-ground garden are working for us so far. There aren't any mole hills out here yet, but they are just working in this area. We didn't put any of those devices anywhere else. And out here in the yard, I'd say we have just as many mole hills as ever. Here's one. Here's another. They're all over the place. I just routinely come through here and kind of kick them apart. Spread the dirt out again. A lot of folks would be pretty angry at moles for digging up the yard. And I'm not thrilled about it. But it's not really like my yard is in contention for better homes and gardens. Maybe somebody should make a magazine called Better Homesteads and Yards that are also goat and rabbit pasture. Besides just kicking over and smoothing out the molehills in the yard, sometimes I'll also dig them up and move the dirt to low spots in the yard. The neighbors would probably say I spend a lot of time out here weeding. It's not just to make the yard look nicer or to keep the weeds from spreading even further. I really kind of enjoy getting these weeds out and feeding them to the chickens as special treats.
our potatoes are starting to come up, which is kind of nice. Yep. We're growing them this year, not in a potato tower, because that didn't work. Yeah. We're growing them in buckets and large containers. Work. Yeah, we'll show how we did it two years ago in these grow bags. They're falling apart. We've got some volunteers coming back here. Obviously, they got a head start. I don't think we harvested this one and that one. I think maybe they died back really fast and then we thought they were dead, but obviously not. So, um, but some of these half filled ones, I'm pretty sure that we emptied and then there was just a couple little tiny ones and I was like, eh, and threw them back in there when I threw the dirt in. Mm -hmm. And so the, this one, this one, and these two, our volunteers from that. There's quite a few in this one. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. So we'll see how they do. They're really crowded. All of them are really crowded. So. The problem with the grow bags is they fall apart and they rip. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they don't have a they don't have really long shelf life for the bags themselves. We're hoping the buckets. Are a little more permanent solution maybe I mean they're they're probably gonna crack and things like that but they're not going to just full-on disintegrate and make a big mess like these grow bags do so I, I'm leaning more towards buckets and I think if if after I get the potatoes out of there if we actually wash rinse them out stack them up and store them up in the far reaches of the the barn shed or something like that 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 will actually be better that the, the buckets will last a lot longer because we also have been leaving these grow bags out all the time and they're not really very conducive to cleaning or putting away because they'll just mold so well, let's take another look at the potato buckets As you can see, it's a little plant, but it is growing. Big ones, this one. Here's another little one here. You can see just a few popping up down this direction. My big yeah, the big bucket has several coming up around. Yeah, and you can see that when you plant, like this would have been one potato, this would have been one potato, and this would have been one potato, but the number of eyes it has on it will lead to more sprouts sometimes so those were pretty big potatoes for two of them so there's lots of foliage coming up which is nice mm -hmm. and it's important not to overwater these things mm -hmm. we found that out last yeah. year yeah well the year before mm -hmm. the year before we had we had some in the grow bags that Right. Brian really likes to water them <laughs> and he was watering them and I didn't know he was watering them and then I watered them on a less frequent basis and he kept saying they look dry and so he would go out and water them and then because of course they fall over when they start to die back and you shouldn't water them once they do that yeah. because that means they're kind of done and you need to pull them up soon. So usually I wait till mine kind of fall over and turn a little yellow and then I pull them up. So, yeah. You don't want to water them when they start, when you're getting to them. <laughs> when, they're, when they're drying up and looking like they're really thirsty, that's when you don't want to water them because the potatoes are going to be ready Yeah. and you don't want to have Soggy, mushy, not good potatoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or if you water them too much right before you pull them, they may start sprouting again too. And then you, you kind of have problems. So, either way, it's not good. If anybody's wondering about this blue tarp behind us, we've just covered a big brush pile for burning in our fire pit back there. It was raining a, a little bit earlier, so we, we covered it up just to keep it dry. So when we do get around to burning again, it'll be ready to go.
those five new chickens that were born right at the first of the year. Well, they've integrated well, and I think they're just completely comfortable with the new pecking order. It's nice to see everybody getting along. Or more or less getting along, I guess.